Hi everyone, welcome to our quick video lecture about types of variables and types of research claims. Let's get started. When it comes to variables, there are different types. Remember that a variable just means to vary, to change. So it's something that we're interested in looking at more that has a potential to change, as opposed to a constant, which of course remains the same. There are two main types. There are ones that we only measure and ones that we manipulate. The ones that we manipulate are the ones that, as a researcher, we actually do something to, directly. Sometimes I hear the phrase, well, I picked which ones I wanted to examine. So that's manipulation, right? No. Manipulation means that you, the researcher, are actually changing something. Whereas measured variables are just things that we measure. We don't actually try to influence them or change them or give one group one version and one group another. We're literally just measuring. Oftentimes in psychology, we measure them with some kind of survey method. But remember, you can measure variables lots of ways. You can take people's blood pressure or swap their mouth for cortisol levels or track their eye movements. So there's lots of ways we can measure things. But when I just measure a variable, it's a measured variable, I actually have to do something for it to be manipulated. If you think about quantitative methods, you can usually divide up the questions that we ask or the types of claims we're trying to establish into three main categories, frequency, association, and causal. In a frequency claim, we're literally trying to understand what is the frequency of something. So how much or how often? In a frequency claim, there is one and only one variable. And that variable is only measured. So if I were to say something like the percentage of students who bought the textbook, that would be a frequency claim because I only measured how many students bought the textbook. There's only one variable here and I'm kind of describing how much. What is the frequency of students who bought the textbook? That's a frequency claim. A lot of times, frequency claims are about descriptive statistics. Association claims, you can think of this as a relationship because there are two variables here. But each of the variables are also only measured. Because they are only measured, we're looking to see is there a relationship between them. So a lot of times with this, we're using correlations where we're looking to see if one variable goes up what happens to the other one does it also go up or does it go down or is there no relationship here at all causal claims are the third one causal claims are usually experiments where we're trying to show cause and effect now in a cause and effect relationship we have to have at least one variable that is manipulated and at least one variable that is only measured. The real key here is that a variable is manipulated. And again, we're trying to establish a cause and effect relationship. So if you read a description and there's only one variable and that variable is measured, we know it's a frequency claim. If there's two variables, we know it can't be a frequency claim. It's either an association claim or a causal claim. If the two variables are only measured, it's clearly an association claim. And if one of those variables is manipulated, then it may be a causal claim. When we think about establishing a cause and effect relationship, we have to show three things. The first one is that we have to show that the variables co-vary. What we mean by this is that they are in a relationship with each other and as one changes, the other one changes. That first part is basically an association claim. So a cause and effect relationship is a special kind of relationship. And if they're not related at all, they can't have a special relationship. Just like you can't have a special relationship with someone you've never met before, but that not all friendships are intimate partners just because you have a relationship with someone doesn't mean it's the special kind of relationship. So the first step is to show that the variables are related to each other, that they co-vary. A correlation only shows part one. 
that they co-vary. They're in a relationship with each other. But a cause and effect relationship also requires for temporal precedence that you know which one came first. The cause, of course, has to come first. In an association claim, you're just measuring both. And so because you're just measuring both, you don't know which one came first. But in a cause and effect relationship, you're manipulating one of the variables. And so you know that that's the one that came first. The third thing is internal validity. And what this means is that you have tried to control for all of the other variables in the situation so that you know that when you just tweak this one over here, if this one changes, it's because you tweaked that one thing over there. Hey everybody, you may know that my clothes have changed and that's because part of this video came from a previous semester. But I hope that this has been really short but also really helpful in establishing the three types of claims that we'll be looking at. Now it's really important to understand that those types of claims are primarily for quantitative methods. There are of course claims for qualitative methods, but while statistics are sometimes used in qualitative methods, we test for things a little bit differently in qualitative methodology. So for this course, since this is a statistics course, we're going to mainly focus on quantitative methods and on these three types of claims. Hopefully our first activity will help you understand these three types better and then I also organize the class so that the first thing we talk about is frequency and descriptives and then the second thing we talk about is correlations and associations and the last thing we talk about is causal claims particularly around t-tests and ANOVAs. So like I said I hope this was helpful and if not feel free to reach out to me through office hours or the FAQ board and I'll see you online.